Hey everybody, we're going to uh, watch now the first of a series of videos that are going to discuss what we call the articulatory properties of consonants. And in this short video, we're going to learn three key terms that we use in the description of how consonant sounds are made in human language. And what you're going to take away from the video is that you're going to first see that linguists break consonant sounds down into key component parts. And once you understand these three key component parts, you'll learn, you'll be able to learn how to describe the different consonants in the world's languages. And at the same time, you'll be able to use these articulatory features, these key parts that we're going to talk about, to group consonants together into classes that are based on shared features. So let's start by considering a picture. What do we think that the person in this picture is about to say? If your mind works like mine does, um, you probably think she's going to say something that starts with an F sound. So why do we think it could be an F sound? Well, it could be an F because, well, literally we can see something really important about how she's making the sound. What we can see is that her upper teeth are in contact with her lower lip. And in our last video, we noted that consonant sounds are sounds that are made with a constriction in the vocal tract. That's characteristic of what it means to be a consonant sound. So for the sound F, this constriction, fortunately here for our example, is visible to us precisely because we make it by making contact between the upper teeth and the lower lip. For this reason, we call F a labiodental sound, capturing the fact that its production involves contact between the lips, the labio part, and the teeth, the dental part. But this also raises a larger point. What it does is it introduces the concept of place of articulation. So by describing F as a labiodental sound, we're also at the same time showing something general and important about consonant sounds. And that is specifically where we make a constriction when we produce consonant sounds is central to our understanding how to describe them and how to, how to distinguish between different consonant sounds. The where, in other words, uh, refers to the location of the constriction. And this is what linguists refer to as, in a general sense, the place of articulation of a consonant. So let's look at this picture again, and let's ask another question. Do we actually know that she's going to make an F, a sound F, a word that begins with F? And if we don't actually know for sure, what other sound could she be about to say that's not F? I'm going to guess that if you were thinking about it, you could have thought that it was a word that began with a V, like very. And you'd be right. It could very well be a V. So what does this now tell us? It tells us that F and V are both labiodental sounds. They both are made with this contact between the upper teeth and the lower lip. And in a more general sense, it tells us that they both have the same place of articulation. So then the next question is, how are they different from one another? Why is FF and VV if they're both labiodental sounds? Well, try doing the following. What I want you to do is, just like you see in the picture, I want you to take your fingers and I want you to put them on either side of your thyroid. I want you to keep them there and say the following slowly. Ah, fa. Ah, fa. Now do the same thing, but this time say ava. 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 What did you notice? And in particular, did you feel a difference when you said those two things? I think when you said afa that you probably shouldn't feel any vibration in your fingertips while you're making the F part of afa. So not the ah part, but the f part. Afa. Fa. Notice that the vibration in the ah is there. It turns off for the f and back on for the ah. Ah, fa. 
Okay, if you felt that there's no vibration during the F, I want you to do the same thing, but note that the vibration is going to go all the way through the V sound. Ava. Ava. This difference is the key to understanding the difference between F and V. And it also brings us to our second larger point. What it does is it introduces the concept of voicing in the articulation of consonant sounds. So by noticing that F is realized without any vibration and that V is realized with vibration, what we're talking about is vibration of the vocal cords. And what we see then is that the presence or absence of vibrating vocal cords during the production, during the making of a consonant sound is also a really important property in describing consonant sounds. Consonants like F are made without vibration and we call them voiceless consonants. Consonants like V are made with vibration and we call them voiced consonants. So now let's take one more look at this picture and just make sure we understand what we know so far. We know that she could be about to make an F or a V. So that lets us know that both F and V are labiodental sounds. That's their place of articulation. They're both made at the same place. But we also know that they're different. And we know they're different because F is made without vibration, so it's a voiceless sound, and V is made with vibration, so it's a voiced sound. Okay, now look at this picture. It's different. So what could she be about to say? Well, the first observation is, it's probably not something that starts with an F or a V, because she doesn't look like this. So what could it be? Well, think about the position of her two lips in this picture. Basically, it could be a B, or it could be a P, or it could even be an M. Because what we notice is that she's got her lips pressed together. Pa, ma, ba. And sounds that are made, a sound, any sound that's made with the two lips pressed together, those are called bilabial sounds. That is known as their place of articulation. Again, we've got bilabial now, and we've got labiodental for F and V. But there's one other thing that I want us to notice here. In particular, if we now can compare in these two pictures, when she makes a sound like P or B in the upper picture, she's going to totally prevent air from escaping from her mouth when she makes it. But when she makes an F or a V, like the lower picture, air is going to escape from her mouth the whole time that she is making it. So you can test this for yourself and let's do it. What I want you to do is say, ah, ba, but I want you to put your hand directly in front of your mouth. And what you should feel is no air is coming out of your mouth while she's making, while you're making the B. That is while you've, you've got your lips pressed together for the B sound. You'll feel a burst of air when you let go of it, when you open your lips to get to the following ah, but not during the B. So let's do it. Ah, ba, ah, ba, ah, ba. Now let's do the same thing, but with ah, fa. And what you should feel is during the F part of ah, fa, you should still feel air escaping from your mouth, flowing out of your mouth, and hitting the hand that's in front of your mouth. Ah, fa, ah, fa, ah, fa. This difference tells us that consonants like B and P are made by blocking airflow totally from escaping from the mouth while we produce them, while other consonants like F and V only partially block the airflow that comes from our lungs and up through the vocal tract and out of the mouth. That is to say, F and V partially obstruct airflow, while P and B are sounds that totally obstruct airflow from escaping from the mouth. So this also raises a larger point. It introduces the third key term that we're going to look at in this video, which is the concept of manner in the articulation of consonant sounds. B 
which is realized without letting air escape from the mouth, F, which is realized with less constriction, constriction, less constriction so that air does escape. What we see here is that in addition then to where we make a constriction, and in addition to whether our vocal folds, our vocal cords are vibrating or not, we also need to understand the kind of constriction we make when we make consonant sounds. This different kind of constriction between one sound and another is given the general term of manner of articulation. So totally constricted sounds like B and P have a different manner of articulation, and we'll learn the technical descriptions of what, how to label different manners of articulation in another video. But B and P have a different manner of articulation than, say, F and V do. Okay, so summing up. First, we looked at the concept of place of articulation. And remember, place of articulation refers to where we make the constriction we make when we produce consonant sounds. And we saw the case of F and V, and we labeled them as labiodental sounds, for example. And I noted that sounds like B and P and M are bilabial sounds. Those are their places of articulation, respectively. Second, we saw the importance of voicing in the articulation of consonants. So voicing refers to the vibration of the vocal cords. And voice consonants are accompanied by vocal cord vibration. And we looked at the example of V. V voiceless consonants are produced with no vocal, vo no vocal cord vibration. And we looked at the example of F. Third, we saw the importance of manner of articulation in consonants. So manner refers to the kind of constriction we make when we make a consonant. And we looked at the example of consonants such as B that are made by blocking the exit of air from the vocal tract completely. And we looked at the example of F, which is made with a constriction that still allows for air to escape from the vocal tract while we're producing it. So the takeaway. There are three key dimensions that we need to understand for describing consonants. We need to know what's happening at the vocal cords. Are they vibrating or not? We need to know where a constriction is made. Is it at the two lips? Is it at the lips and teeth? Is it somewhere else that we can't see easily from outside? And third, we need to know the manner of articulation. Am I making a sound that allows air to keep escaping? Am I making a sound that blocks air completely? In subsequent videos, we're going to now focus a little bit more closely on each, and we're going to learn some very specific terms that allow us to describe places and manner in addition to the voicing terms that we have. And we'll see you shortly in another video.